Hello everybody, it is me of Briskatuzzi, and today we're here talking about The Rising of the Shield Hero Episode 3! Okay, so for this episode, we saw that the wave happened. I've only watched the first 12 minutes of this episode, so there's not a lot to talk about since not that much happened until the wave happened. But we saw that uh, apparently Nafumi has lots and lots of shields now. One question that I've even wondered when I read the manga, because I remember some things, but my memory is a little bit thwarted with that stuff, but... How many shields does he have now? Because I was wondering this with the other heroes. Do the other heroes have the same abilities as he has? Because I'm wondering, like, because his shield seems super, like, strong and OP because he has, like, many different shields now. Like, he probably has, like, more than 40, maybe more than 50. Maybe he, isn't ha maybe he even has 100 shields by now. Maybe in the manga he has close to 200. Like, 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 that's, like, OP. Like, he could use any form of shield that he wants to by using any material, like, in the world based on what we've seen so far. Because he used a stick this episode. Before he was using mushrooms, he put grass in it. Like, like, dude, what, what are the other shield, like, what are the other, like, hero's abilities supposed to be? Because we have the bow hero, spear hero, and sword hero. So I'm wondering, like, like, how, like, less they are towards him. Because, like, he has, like, he's, like, stronger than them so far with, with how many capabilities he has. So I'm wondering how their abilities work and if they're able to be more powerful than him or maybe he's more powerful than with how he's able to, like, block, like, any attack from, like, any direction whenever he wants to. He can even, like, you can tell, like, how him and Raftali at the beginning of the episode before the opening song, how they were both fighting, uh a hedgehog monster and then like he was able to like trap it in a grass ball like in the in the in the manga i think that looked a little bit differently but it's just weird seeing it like as a ball like like a little leaf ball and then it was trapped and the they came in and then sliced it we saw that apparently she's level 18 but i guess we still don't know what level uh nafumi is because i guess he's probably at near the same level but since she's attacking he's getting he's leeching off exp from raftalia maybe he's like probably like two maybe three levels behind her maybe or maybe she maybe he's at the same level or higher but since he's leeching off he might be lower but based on how exp works in video games if you go into a high level area with a friend and your friend is higher than you then you do like go up like three or four levels per a thing so they were both at zero and I guess she, she gets majority of the EXP, she would probably be just a little bit higher than him. So he's probably like 16, maybe 17, probably just a little bit behind her. So his level's going up. And who knows? We don't, we don't really know what other rank, we don't really know what rank the other heroes are at. They're probably like the same rank, maybe a little bit higher, probably. But they are stronger than him, so maybe they're a little bit higher. Like, who knows how that works? Then we saw how uh, he went to the blacksmith guy the bald dude to see if he could get ar his better armor and we also saw how raftalia her personality changed from the last episode when she sworn her sword to nafumi she became like a very like a uh, straightforward girl that takes no smack whatsoever now and then like she's trying to act like an adult even though that if, i'm pretty sure that in the manga it said that it's only been two weeks she's only been like like an adult for two weeks since when she was uh in her kid form uh, I, for, I don't know if it's because of like her armor in the opening song and the way that she looks like in the future, but she seems so skinny and so small. Like she seems like 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 in the in the manga, I thought that she was like as tall as Nafumi, but she she's just a little bit smaller. She's like teenager size, but in the opening, she's like almost like as tall as him. So maybe she grows more. Because in the manga, it seems like she grew right away, but in this, it seems like she's in a teenager form. That maybe she level when she levels up higher, maybe she becomes like full on adult. And I guess that uh, Nafumi wanted to get armor for her, but she said that he needed more armor because he got hurt because of the... Is it not a hedgehog? Could it be Could it be a porcupine? Porcupine. Porcupine? Was it a porcupine? I need to look at animals. I don't know what animals are. And we saw how he got his armor that we saw in the opening. I'm pretty sure, like, I think he has this armor for, like, the whole entire series. I don't think he ever changes it. I think the only other person that gets an upgrade is when uh, Raftalia gets her upgrade from when he, like, gets... Because she since she got armor for him, he's probably going to get armor for her after this catastrophe. And then after that, once they were done with that guy, they saw that there was a whole bunch of, like, knights flooding, like, the town because the cat catastrophe was coming. And then the bald guy told uh, Nafumi that apparently... The, uh, he didn't know when the because he didn't know when the wave started. Everyone else knew when the wave started because he has a lack of information because no one trusts him anymore. So then he, the blacksmith guy, told Nafumi to go to like a church. So then he went to a church, and I'm pretty sure that there was more talking in that in the manga, like, like, uh, like, like the lady that was escorting escorting him in the manga was just like, oh, are you the shield hero perhaps? And then like 
they had like a little small conversation before he actually saw the uh the... it was weird because in the manga when he looked at the uh the hour the dragon hourglass it showed the number on it like automatically but in this you see his shield glow and then shoot a beam up and then as soon as when he locks on to the i guess the frequency of the hourglass he gets like an automatic timer in his like display in his gamer display that's kind of cool it would be cool if, if it stayed like that like once he locked on to it he always saw that but i'm pretty sure that in the manga or in future events, he always needs to go back to that place in order to like get the exact amount when it's about to happen. But it'd be cool if he would if he, if it's like always there, because then he could then he could get ahead on things like super easily. Before they got prepared, you saw how uh, the spear guy came with the uh, with the bitch girl, <laughs> the girl with the red hair showed up and then was uh, smack talking a uh, reptilia because she was a demi human and told the spear guy not to bother with her. And then I like it how they're really playing up uh, the spear guy being like a like an all girl team because all of his like team members I think are girls so then he tried to like swoo Raftalia and uh, in the manga it seemed like Raftalia had nothing to do with it like I didn't really get I didn't really think that she was into it but in this you see her like blushing and being bewildered by him but then after she like saw through his swooning she was just like I'm sorry but I've only sworn my loyalty to uh Nafumi sama and then after that uh in the in the manga it seemed like it seemed like uh like the expression that Nafumi made when uh, when the spirit guy tried to swoon over Atalia, it seemed like he was like more pissed, and he got like way, like way up into his face, and then he got mad, and he started walking away. I don't even remember the uh, the sword hero and the bow hero even being there. Like I thought that it was only the spirit hero that showed up, but I guess not. And then after that, the timer was going down, and then Raftalia told uh, Nafumi how grateful she was, and that was a pretty cute moment and pretty epic moment, especially with her eyes glowing up when she was talking to Nafumi about it. Then the catastrophe timer t went down, and then they both, and then they got teleported. That's kind of cool how they got teleported to a different area, and they got teleported to the village that they were at last episode. So now they're getting ready to attack the uh, the catastrophe. It was cool seeing like portals in the sky, and you saw like a like a wave or like like clouds forming into like sort of like tornadoes, and you saw like a whole bunch of like monsters just fly down from it. That was a cool and epic moment right there. And you saw the you saw like a difference in priorities with priorities with uh, Nafumi and the rest of the heroes where the three other heroes just charged right in to go like to the major point of where the uh, the enemies were falling down to. But then uh, but then Raftalia saw that the views that they were at last episode was getting attacked. So then she said we should attack we should help the citizens instead of attacking the monsters. Then he said so and then Nafumi thought about it and he was like yeah you're right it would be better to help them than to just kill the monsters. We should actually help people be heroes. So then you saw how he's trying to be like a better person than the rest of them because both because the rest of them are just want to get that exp and get the fame when he just wants to just protect a small little village from having the so the, the civilians get hurt which is a very uh honorable thing to do so um can't wait to see how that fight goes and see what the rest of the episode is like so yeah i'll be back in a few seconds to review the rest of this i'm back i just watched the rest of this episode and all i gotta say is that one thing that happened with while nafumi was fighting off against the, the catastrophe wave at loot village was that he went up a tower and then he like burnt down the tower with the gasoline from like the lights from the lights and then like burnt it down and had it fall over I never, I don't even remember that even happening in the manga. Like, I don't even remember that, like, happening, like, whatsoever. And then, like, seeing that happen, that was pretty epic how he, like, was trying to figure out a plan to save, like, these, these groups of, like, like, I guess, like, uh, amateur, like, adventurers in, in, like, this town. They were, like, like, swarmed by a whole bunch of monsters and he couldn't figure out a way to protect the last people, like, that he needed to protect. So then he burnt down the tower. First, he tried to ring the bell, but the bell didn't do anything. They just looked over at him, then went back to the humans. And then he burnt it down. He jumped off. And to be honest, it looked like he was going to activate, like, like, his, like, uh, Ah, uh, damn it! I forgot what it's called. His like air shield to like to like help him fall down. But instead, he grabbed like a string, grab like grab gr grabbed onto like the edge of like a hook on like a t on like a house, and then flew back down and flew into a bunch of boxes to halt his fall. That was pretty like awesome. But then like all the other villagers came. But it was cool how when he came in with the rough they were like they were both doing like combos attacks where he was dodging and you know he was like like getting the attacks onto his shield like blocking it like one monster at a time. And then rough would come in and then just like come in and then just slash 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 attack and then you saw like i think towards the ending of the battle or, like towards like yeah, i think towards the ending you saw that their levels went up i think uh like uh i forgot what it was at wasn't it like 18 and 16 but now she like now we're off talia is level 21 and then nafumi is level 19 it's pretty it's pretty awesome how just after the wave they went up three levels i wonder if the other heroes ended up like that too uh it kind of sucks how all the other heroes thought that nafumi never showed up like, like, even in the manga, like, you're just like, oh, like, my God, man, like, they don't know anything. Like, like, he would tell, like, he would, like, be honest with them and, like, say things, but you could just tell, like, like, he doesn't want to have anything to do with the other heroes anymore. Like, I'm pretty sure that they, like, I'm pretty sure that they might have removed a scene, or maybe it happened last episode where, 
picture, but I remember like them like mentioning like chainmail, and then Nafumi gets angry at like the thought of chainmail because of the because of the red haired girl. Maybe that happened last episode. Maybe maybe that was supposed to happen this episode. I don't really, I don't quite remember, but I think it did. But it was cool how once he saved the villagers and he told the villagers to evacuate, they all came back because of how heroic they saw him. You also saw that with the knights. There was a group of knights that came from like the from like the the town. Oh my god, it was so scumbaggy how they used like flares to like like launch like a like a friggin' like like a Molotov attack onto the whole entire village, burning down buildings and like killing a few monsters. And they thought that that was a good thing to do. Like, what if there was town members in there? Like, you could tell like like the royal royalty of the knights just don't care about civilians whatsoever when they were supposed to. You could just tell that Nafumi is like the true hero, like out of all the other heroes. And then you saw how the rest of the knights after after they killed like just a few monsters, like they were just gonna leave Nafumi and them. You saw how Raftalia like attacked attacked uh attacked the knights once nafumi told her that that they were like that they could have like died from them so then she attacked them and then and then you saw that the uh the knights uh nafumi told her to forget about it and then she like like just sort of reluctantly did it and then the knights said they were going to leave nafumi to kill the rest of the monsters while they went to help the other heroes and then he said uh then he said that before they left they had he was okay with them dying if they were about to die but then as like a huge monster was about to kill the knight that was being an asshole nafumi saved him and said like you better help us or else you'll die you don't want to die in this type of place and then you saw how the three oldest knights like left to help the other heroes but then like the younger heroes like stayed behind to help Nafumi that was pretty like uh cool of them you could tell that the younger generation is more impressionable and more like honorable than the older people because older people are like so like like old they're they're like uh, they, they would rather just do nothing and then they just don't care about anything with the young generation you saw that there was one like 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 young knight that was like very impressed by Nafumi and Raftalia's combo attacks killing monsters so then they helped them out and then helped them defeat the rest of the the rest of the enemies as the villagers left and then like hid somewhere to like and they also hid in the cave from the last episode that was pretty awesome because there was I guess there was like no monsters there anymore since they killed the dog maybe that was like the only monster in there maybe all the other ones are low level but even the low level ones like normal humans get scared of with the balloons but other than that that's all that happened this episode they ended up clearing the, the catastrophe and then uh, all of the the portals in the sky disappeared, and then Nafumi uh, got thanked by the villagers. And then they also forgot to mention that that it was like the vi- like the villager leader, like the mayor, thanked Nafumi personally. I think like the bearded guy at the end, the old dude. I think that he's the mayor, and he thanked him personally. And then uh, Nafumi's just like whatever, acting like the cool dude, even though that you know that he would like to act like his old self back in the the first episode when he first appeared in in this world. But then he's battle hardened now. So then I guess, and then after that, you saw how. Uh, Raftalia was trying to get her promise across from last episode where Nafumi told her to like help protect other kids from not going through what she did and then she ended up asking him if she did that today in this battle of the first wave and then Nafumi said sure we did or like something like that like he did say like yeah probably and then so then she started crying after he head patted her like you need to head pat like those lollies that you have and then he like and then after that the episode ended so this episode was pretty good. I especially I loved the fight. I loved the way that it was. Uh, the whole entire like character moments were pretty cool, especially in the middle of the episode. And I uh, can't wait till next episode. There's lots of stuff that I think happened in the next episode that are going to be pretty cool and interesting, and it's going to be pretty like interesting to see the type the type of stuff that reactors and other people think about the next episode if they're anime only. But uh, yeah, those were my thoughts about this episode. If you enjoyed this review slash my discussion test thoughts on this episode, leave a like. If you didn't enjoy this like whatsoever or at all, you can leave a dislike. And again, I'll see you in the next video or next week. And uh, yeah, bye.